So we've created our repositories and our models, and now we need to create controllers. And as you can see, I've already created one for the tasks just to kind of speed up the process that you can take a quick look. What we're going to do, we're going to um, give it a request mapping. So on the task bar, on the um, address bar, it's going to be for slash API v1 tasks for this particular one. And then we're going to have a um, get mapping to kind of get all. We're going to have a uh, get mapping to get one individual item. We're going to have a post for creating an item. We're going to have um, a delete and then we're going to have an update. Okay, so what we're going to do, as you can see, the request one is a delete, a put is a for an update. But anyway, this is uh, for uh, the task controller. What I'm going to do is I'm create another one for the employee. So we want to create a new Java class, and we're going to call this one employee controller. Now I will say up front that I am putting all the code in the controller. However, uh, what you may do in theory, you might actually have a service, maybe create a new folder called service, and have all your code in the service and the controller. API ends just to call the rest API ends just call into the services and, and make it a little bit easier and nicer, um, you know, hiding some of the code. So, anyway, we've got our package which is the controller package. Uh, what I'm going to do at the moment, I'm going to import uh, it, may pull these in when I start using them, but I'm going to import it the to do list and then I want to import my models and I'm going to import the uh, employee model because that's the one we're actually working with. And so anyway, I'm going to continue onwards. So the first thing I want to do is I want to say that this is a REST controller. Okay, and let import the appropriate um, libraries. And then I also want to say, uh, we'll give it its request mapping. So um, request mapping, and this is where I'm going to say it's um, going to be in slash API. And this is you can give it your own, but this is the one I'm just going to use for this one. And it's called employee and spell. And it's going to be employees. So that's going to be the address on top of whatever web page it is. In the case of a test, it's going to be local host. So the next thing I want to do is I want to set up the repository, and we can use auto wide for that. Um, if you're wondering what each of these are, I recommend that you go and look them up um, rather than me trying to explain them. But it's basically this is a behind the scenes setting up um, all the requirements that's needed uh, for um, for connecting up things like our repository. So then we're going to say um, it's going to be our private, and we want to uh, use our employee repository. Um, there we go. If you pick it from the list, at least it, it kind of pulls it all in. And I'm going to let it choose me the right name. So that's now connected the repository to this API, which means we can obviously load and save data as need be. The next thing I want to do is I want to go get my get mapping, and we're going to connect our um, we're going to create our list return. So this is going to be the uh, list of it, uh, of employees. Yeah, so it's an employee type, yeah, which we've already pulled in anyway, but that would have added that mapping otherwise. And then we're going to call it, uh, I'm going to call it, just call it list, yeah. And then what we're going to do in there now, we're going to use our um, repository. Remember, because we've used, if we look at uh, employee very quickly, employee repository, because we've used this JPA repository, remember it gives us a lot of things. Uh, one of those is this. Um, if I, I well, if I do a dot, then you can see there's lots of things it pulls in. But one of them, in particular, is this find all, which is the first one we're going to use. And what that's that's going to do is it's going to return a list of all the employees. And now let's enter that to pull that Java list in. There we go. Um, 
the great thing about IntelliJ is it, it kind of helps you. A lot of the code editors help, help you these days with putting in the things that you need. So anyway, that's the, that's the method that's going to pull all the employees from the database. I'm not going quite quick, but I want to get through this very quickly so that you can then look back at the video again if you need to, but also look up what each of these does online. This is a very short um, REST API, so we don't necessarily need to spend a lot of time finessing it, but you, you can, if you want extra things in it later on, add more things. So the next thing we want to do, we want to actually do the get mapping for a method that will pull out just one um, ID. So you pass in an ID and it pulls out one um, one employee. So we're going to request mapping. And what we want to do is we want to pass in an ID for this. So we're going to pass in an ID. And this is going to be um, you know your ID, which is along the, the ID that you use to save the with in the database um, or the, it gets associated with the employee in the database so we've said in the model that this is a lung so when we we write this one on a public we're going to call this one uh, we're going to return the employee yeah because we obviously want to turn around a single employee and we're going to do a, a get for this one call it get and then what we want to do we want to pass in a path variable and this is going to be a lung because we've said it's a lung and we know it's a lung we've given it a lung and we're going to call it id right and then what we're going to do for this is again return we're going to return an employee repository and this one we're going to do uh, something called a get one and we're going to pass in a lung which is that id and now that will return the employee the employee associated with the ID that we pass in. Notice I'm not doing any error checking on this so that you know and potentially the employee may not exist if you give it a road number. I'm not validating. Um, this is something that you can add later on as I say maybe you add a service which does more code on these but this is just a, a quick kind of introductory. So of course we've done our get to get the list and we get a uh, single one but we also want to go to maybe add them so we're going to create a post mapping this time because we're going to post something into not get from we're going to post something into the the um, service and so we're going to say this one is um, public and it's going to be an employee type return um, and we're going to call it create yeah and then in this one we're going to say it's uh, the a body so it's request body and it's going to be a final because we don't want it to change once we pass it in and it's going to be a type employee and we're going to call it employee all right so this is going to put we're passing in um, a body of information so it's not a single piece of id it's like the all the information that you'd expect to be in which is in the employee model um now we don't necessarily have to fill in every single part of it but it's needs to have a number of items um, if we look at the model, um, the employee model, um, it needs to have, you know, for example, uh, an ID for it to be able to save, um, for example. Um, but you can specify um, which things are, you know, have to be in. In the case of this is a very simple, say, model, so we're not, we're not looking too, dip, too deep into that. We're not doing any validation. I'm just showing you how it works. So, again, um, what we want to do, we want to just do a return. I want to use our employee repository again. And for this one, we're going to use a um, save and flush. So what that does is it actually saves um, and, and flush basically flushes up the stream to, to save it to the database. Um, tends to be the databases don't, or streams don't necessarily get written until they're flushed. So this one does a save and flush, and then all we want to do, we want to save the employee, and there you go, now that's a create, that's going to take inf a data in to the API, and it's going to save it in the database. Um, next one, we want to actually do um, the, maybe we've added one, but we, we want to get rid of one, maybe we've put something wrong and we need to delete it, so uh, we just do a at request mapping, and then we want to pass in a value so we need to pass in the value 
of, of the ID. You know, we want to pass in the ID of what we want to delete at the end of the day. We don't want to just delete everything. We want, uh, we want to delete something specific. So we're passing the ID. And then we say the method we're going to use is request method and it's dot and then you can see there delete. So it's a delete method, okay? That's what that's saying. Sorry, not there. And then we're going to call it um, public void. We don't return anything. Delete. And then we're going to pass in, as I say, we've already said we part of the request mapping is that it's going to take in an ID. So we have to say at path variable and then we have to say um, it's basically a lung and it's going to be ID. Okay, and then what we do then again we do employee employee repository dot delete by ID because we're going to delete by ID and then we're just passing the ID. Okay. There's no return and that one is just a delete. And then finally, probably the, the largest out of the lot is the update method because we might want to update some information. So we've got request mapping and then again we need to pass in the value of ID. Yeah, because well, it's again we need the ID to, to to use to find the actual item that we want to update, and then we say the method in this case is going to be the request method dot and can you guess which one it is it's a put put is update or we use put for updates and then it's going to we're going to call this one we want to return the employee by the way and we want to call this one update just to uh, keep it consistent and then what we've said already, we we're going to pass in a path path variable of uh, well, first of all, a lung because we need to pass in the ID. Yeah, and then we also need to pass in the body because we're passing in all the information that we need to update. Okay, let's put this on the next line so we can actually see quest body, and then we can actually see it separated out. And we're going to call it employee. An employee, okay. And then what we want to do, we want to two things we need to do. We need to first of all read the employee from the database because this is the thing we need to update. So we're going to go employee um, existing em, existing employee. We want to go from the employee repository. We want to do a uh, a get get one because we want to read a single one like we did earlier and then we're going to pass in the ID like so and then we're going to use something called copy properties so we're going to it's beans utils and what we're going to do we're going to do a copy properties and we're going to take it from a source to a target so the source is the which we passed in which if you uh, look it's called employee wasn't it and then what we want to do, we want to say we're going to copy to the existing employee because that's the one we want to do. Now the problem with this is you get a new ID and you don't want a new ID, you want to have the existing ID. So what you want to say in this, you want to say I want to actually have it uh, exclude or ignore properties, you can see the string ignore properties. And what this calls in the database is employee underscore ID. So what that's going to do is it's going to copy from employee to existing employee but it's not going to copy across the employee ID and then finally I'll keep on a separate line we're going to do a return employee repository and it's going to be a save and flush just like when we created it save and flush and then we pass in the existing employee because that's what we've just copied everything to and there you go that's your uh, employee controller created and as you can see it's very similar to the tasking control the task controller if I go between the two the task controller and the employee controller do very similar things um,
a little bit more spacing in this one. But there you go. Uh, that's your um, employee controller, Autocrat, very simple controller.